If you came strictly for the allelic albinism stuff, then skip ahead to this timestamp right here. If you need a little boost in your morning and it's nice to see some good stuff and some good vibes, well, then stick around for the whole video. Cool? <laughs> Everybody's still sleeping, but good morning, friends and family. How are you guys doing? Look, Hillary's flowers. <laughs> they're, uh, they're not doing as hot as they were before, but you know what? They still have color in them. When do you guys get rid of flowers? All right, check out what's going on today. We got stuff. So we got a new piano, which I'm very excited about and which I will be playing Music Monday songs for you today. Also, we've got this beautiful thing that I completed and it's, it's ready to go. It's ready for chickens. Built my own gate. Pretty happy with how that turned out, actually. I'm really, really happy. It felt very good to complete that. Also, a lot of you guys have been really asking for Hillary to get into the complaining corner and I'm cool with that. We can do that. I'm a little worried about what she might complain about, but you know what? We'll just have to see. Also, get your Cocoa Blocks. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Ooh, la, 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 la. Where are you going? Where are you going? Also, as promised, we're going to go over the allelic combo between mochino, mocha, albino, clock albino. And that'll also apply to candy and toffee and albino and ball python. So it'll be killing two birds with one stone. I promised we would talk about that in this video, so we're going to do it. Where are you going, snake? No, don't, 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 don't. Did you ever get our name? Did you? No, it's Beatrice. Then why are you calling her snake? Oh, I call the snake snake. <laughs> what now? I'm gonna have to shut up that cricket before we start this podcast. Purple! What? The game dog name is Purple? No, Bufo. Bufo. I like the word Bufo. 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 Bufo! But before we get into all that, Noah, Sage, and I are going on our first, our first walk together. Noah, how is that possible? Is this the first time just the two of us have gone on a walk? Um... No, it's not. No? Just the remember, two of us? Well, without you in a stroller. Yeah, but remember when we went to the creek bed? Yeah, but that was, we had Eli and, right? We didn't have Eli. No? But we drove, didn't we? Wait. Oh, we did have we Eli. We did, yeah, we had Eli. So I'm saying just the two of us, bro. Let's go, flip-flop boy. I guess we're going for a run. <laughs> the sun's about to come out. Look, look. <laughs> yep. I said the sun's gonna come out. It came out. Huh? Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, and then it's gone again. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay. Bye, bye, sun. I mean, hi, sun. Let's go. A little reminder for all you folks that are spending a lot of time inside, don't forget to get outside. Get some sun on your face. It's really good for you. And if you don't have sun where you're at, I'm sorry, I can't control the weather, man. You just did back there. Oh, <laughs> that's true, I guess, huh? Isn't this where the sun magically <laughs> appeared? <laughs> hey, Noah. What? What do you know? I know. Deer. What about deer? That we just saw one up there. <laughs> there was one over there. And. Sorry, I punched the camera. Not sorry! And that's all I know. <laughs> Man, remember when you used to actually drop like knowledge bombs on here, not just be a goof? No. <laughs> oh, fine. Oh, hi, Maka. Mm, I love you. Huh? You give hugs? Yeah. You're so nice, T. Oh, and I smoked on my chest. I see Oh. What's that voice? Hey, Muku. 
What do you know? I know. You know what? No. Huh? You know what? Nothing. Nothing? No. <laughs> mommy. Daddy. What? Mommy. You you know mommy? Yeah. <laughs> what 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 about mommy? What do you know about mommy? Stop coaching her, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you have to get in the complaining part. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Chickens are escaping. <laughs> I think it's time to put them in the coop. This is Fluff. Fluff, Fluff has become my. Whoa! Oh my gosh! She just ran into the bin. She flew into the bin. <laughs> All right then, that was Fluff. She's my favorite. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not hers. Now, I do have purple albino and a mochino. <laughs> but I think we can agree that would be absolutely ridiculous if I tried to explain this using these visual cues right here. So I made some I made some special visual cues just for this, but this is this is too much. And I don't have any candino or toffee or albino ball python, so Okay, look, she's even going to the right cage. That's nice. I'm going to do my best to try and explain this in like five to seven minutes so that you guys don't have to sit around here trying to figure it out forever and you can just play it back if you don't quite get it. If you don't have a grasp of simple Mendelian genetics, then watch this video right here and check out this video I did on uh, the Coral Glow stuff as well. All the links to these different videos that are resources as far as understanding this stuff a little better is gonna be in links down in the description. You can check out those other videos. <sighs> Still out of breath from the snakes. I don't have a doctorate in genetics or a doctor in anything for that matter, but uh, these theories about how the albinism works between the T positive albinos, you know, purples or candinos and toffinos and mo mochas and mochinos, all this stuff has been proven theories through breeding that uh, many people have, have um, recreated. So I'm just gonna help you understand the simplicity of it. And we're not gonna get obviously super scientific or deep. All right, first I'm gonna do a retic example for you retic folks, and then I'll do a ball python example. Um, but first let's start with the purple and white phase. This is all Clark albino uh, strain of albinism in retics. So, and again, go watch those other videos if you don't know about chromosomes and X and Y and that the parents each pass off one set of chromosomes and all that stuff otherwise this won't make any sense at all but I, I really just want to stick to this topic and not go over the basics of how um genes are passed on by chromosomes from parents you know you get it this is if you need to understand that stuff first for this to make sense okay and i'm just going to do it by examples of, of breedings like if you were pairing these different animals together and kind of show what examples you would get so let's say that mom is a purple albino and dad is a white phase albino so dad is going to always pass off white and mom is always gonna pass off purple. So if you breed a purple and a white together, you're gonna to get what people refer to as a lavender. That's because they're het purple and het white in one animal. This is a lavender. By that same example, if you took a purple mom and a purple dad and bred them together, they're both always going to pass off purple because that's the only option they have. And all the babies will be purple. You breed a purple to a purple, you're gonna get a clutch full of purple babies. And I don't think I need to explain this. The same thing with white. You breed two white albinos together, you're gonna get all white albino babies. Now sometimes people will say het lav, and all that means is that, say you um, bred a normal to a, a lavender albino, you wouldn't know visually which of those traits got passed on, whether it was the purple or whether it was the white. So if you got an animal that's 100% het for Clark albino and the, one of the parents was a lavender, that's what they mean. You don't know if it's het white, you don't know if it's het purple, and you have to prove it out through breeding. Some people say het lav. It gets confusing, but it's really simple if you look at it like this. So if you were to do a lavender to a lavender, you would get these different results. You only got three, three results you could get. Dad passes on the purple, mom passes on the purple. You can get purples. Dad passes on the purple, mom passes on the white. You get lavenders. Dad passes on the white, and mom passes on the white whites. So you can get purples, whites, and lavenders in a clutch that was produced from two parents who were both lavender albinos in retics. Now this same thing works 
for Candino and Toffino, you know, candy and toffee and albino ball python. It's the exact same thing. Just treat the purple like a toffee or a candy and treat the white like a regular albino, regular yellow and white albino ball python. And it's that simple. Now, when you're talking about bringing in the mocha and the Indo caramel, it's kind of the same thing as, as a purple. It's just another thing of line of T positive that is compatible with the Clark albino strain. So let's say for example, now this is retics again, but this same idea will work for toffees and candies. Like if you bred a toffee and a candy together, you'd get an animal that was het toffee and het candy. And I don't know if that's been done yet or not, but I'm assuming it has, but it would probably look very much like a candy or a toffee. Same thing with Indo caramel and mocha. We're gonna say that they're the same basically. You know, they are different, but Indo caramel, mocha, they're both gonna be represented by this caramel or mocha color here, okay? If you're colorblind, I'm sorry, but you probably don't really care about morphs anyway because you can't see the colors. Now, let's say you have a purple albino father and you breed him to a mocha female. All of your babies are gonna be mochinos because they'll be het mocha and het albino, even if it's purple albino. You get the same thing if you bred a mocha to a white phase albino. Dad passes on all, the only thing he can, which is white albino, and mom passes on mocha. You've got another mochino that just happens to be het white instead of het purple. A lavender albino male to a mocha female. You're gonna get mochinos that are either het purple or het white, but they're gonna be mochinos. And this same thing applies like as if you were doing a lavender to lavender pairing is, is if you had Let's do, it. Let's do a slightly more complex pairing. A Mochino dad who happens to be het white, and we've got a Mochino mom who happens to be het purple. So in that pairing, you've got the options for this. Dad passes on his mocha, mom passes on her mocha, you got babies that are mocha. Dad passes on his mocha, mom passes on the purple, you got babies that are mochinos that are het purple. Dad passes on his white, mom passes on her mocha, again, mochinos that are het white. Some people say there's a way to tell and some people probably can see, but there's not really a, a definitive way to tell the difference between a, a mochino that's het white or that's het purple. Now, from that same pairing, you also have the opportunity to get lavenders. So in that pairing, you've got possibility of mochas, possibility of mochinos that are either het purple or het white, and then you've got the possibility for Lavender albinos. So that's a that's kind of a cool pairing. You get a little mix of all those different things and you, they'll all be albino because it's simple recessive and if both parents are visual, then you're gonna be getting them passing on. It's kind of like that, what people call acts like a super thing in ball pythons. It's it's allelic. They all are on the same locus point on the on the uh, chromosome and it's it, that's how it works. And if, if none of that made sense and if it's still confusing you and these visual cues did not help, I am more than willing to have a phone call with anybody who's really interested in learning about this stuff that, that, that just didn't make sense to you and you're still having trouble grasping it and these cues did not help you. I'd love to help you. But hopefully that did help and you can just watch that. Before, before we have the phone call, try and watch that over a couple times and, and see if it makes sense. Uh, I hope it did. It's super simple. I, I, you know, it took me longer to cut these things out. I, I was thinking about cutting each individual snake out instead of just the whole egg. And I was, then I cut out one and I was like, oh, it looks like it's in an egg. That'll make my job easier. I mean, I'm not five years old anymore. I don't want to cut all that stuff out. <laughs> I'm seven now, by the way. All right, I really hope that made sense to you guys, but it, uh, I'm going to the beach.